You know, we've been going through this series about I am or who we are in Christ. And I don't, if you haven't gotten your 40-day devotional, you can still get it. And it's 40 days of finding out who God says that you are. It's so important that we know who God says that we are because if we don't know what God says we are, then we can believe a million things about what maybe other people think that we are or what our mind tells us we are or our upbringing tells us we are. Our past mistakes tells us we are, but we're not any of those things if they don't match up with what the Word of God says that we are. We are in Christ, and we need to know and understand what He says we are in our life. Come on, somebody say amen. So today I'm going to talk to you, and the title of today's message is, I am, somebody say I am, I am on God's path to grow. I am on God's path to grow. So I'm not leaning on my own understanding. I'm not trying to figure everything out on my own. That's why it's so powerful, all of you who graduated family class, that's why it's so powerful for all those people that went to class because they're saying, I want to be on God's path. It's not just Freedom Christian Center's path. This is us saying we want to be on God's path. I don't want to take my road. I don't want to go my way. I want to be on God's path because if, I, I, if I'm on God's path, I know I'm going to grow spiritually. And how many of you want to go to another level in life in every single area in your life? I know I do. I don't want to stay the same. So point number one is a simple point, but I believe it is a powerful point. Number one, Jesus loves me and he has a plan for my life. Jesus loves me and he has a plan for my life. You know, when I first got saved, I was, well, I, I was really a little girl when I was raised in church, but I went through some little, I went through challenges when I became, you know, around 10, 11, 12 years old. And I was away from the house of God. I was away from God all the way till my senior year in high school. And I found myself in a very empty, very dark place. And one of my friends invited me to a youth ministry. And the, the, the pastor began to talk and he preached. And I honestly can't tell you what he preached about that day or that night. But the one thing that I can remember is that he said, Jesus loves you, and he has a plan for your life. And when he said those words, it's like my, my heart was like icy and frozen. But when he said those words, it's like my heart melted, and I realized that all those years, I had been looking for love and peace and joy, but it was all only going to be found in my Savior, Jesus Christ. And he actually loved me personally, and he had a personal plan for my life. So it sounds so simple, but some people don't believe that Jesus actually loves them and knows them by name. See, Jesus knows you. He loves you, and he has a plan for your life. He has a purpose for your life. Let's read in the word of God in Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord. So the Lord has thoughts about you, and he thinks about you. Maybe you don't think that he does, but he sees you, and he knows you, and he thinks about you. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and to give you a hope. So God, he thinks about you. He loves you. He has a plan for your life. It's a good plan. It's a prosperous plan. It's, it's one full of hope, and it's a plan full of a good future for you. We have to be reminded that God has a plan for our lives. We have to be reminded that he has a hope for our lives, especially if we ever find ourselves going through something challenging where it just seems like maybe a hopeless 
righteousness. But then the word of God comes in like a rushing, uh, like a rushing wave. And it says, no, 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 no. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. I have a plan for your life. I have a future for your life. It's a good one. Stick with me. See, God would tell you this morning, stick with him. And if you stick with him, he's going to take you to those high places. He's going to take you out of where you are. And he's going to take you into a prosperous place. But you must know, you must understand that he loves you and that he has a plan for your life. He doesn't just have a plan for your neighbor's life. He has a plan for your life. Amen? He has a purpose for your life. Another scripture in Psalms 25, 1 through 3 says, Lord, I put my life in your hands. I trust in you, my God, and I will not be disappointed. My enemies will not laugh at me. No one who trusts in you will be disappointed. I don't know about you, but I don't like the enemy laughing at me. If I'm, if I'm in this situation or if I'm in that situation and he's over there laughing at me. If I put my life in the hands of God, literally it says that my enemies cannot laugh at me. They can't laugh at me because God is making me the head and not the tail. God is making me above only and not beneath. God is healing me. He's making me stronger. He's, he's blessing me. He's with me. He's using me to help people because I put my life in his hands. So I know that he loves me. I know that he has a plan for my life. So I'm willing to surrender my life to him. See, for Jesus is the only one who gave his life for all of us. Jesus is the one who made the way where there was no way. So I am, I'm, ex I'm excited to give him my life. He is the one that's worthy to take my life because he bought me with his own life. Amen? Look at another scripture, Isaiah 64, 8. And yet, O oh Lord, you are my father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all formed in your hand. We all come to a place where we realize that he is the potter and that we are clay. See, when you see the clay, it might be a, just a big old mush of clay. But when it gets in the hands of the potter, and if the potter is an excellent potter, then he knows how to form that clay. It looks not beautiful at first. It looks like not much at first. It just looks like a big old lump of clay. What's clay? Who cares about clay? Who's going to just buy a square piece of clay? Nobody. But that's how good the father is, is he takes a, just a random piece of un, unpleasant to look at clay, and he molds it, and he shapes it, and he takes his time, and he molds it again, and he shapes it again, and he takes his time. And that's how we become everything that he says we are, by putting ourselves in the position of saying, Lord, I am your clay. I'm soft. I'm moldable. I'm teachable. Lord, you love me. You have a plan for my life. I want to make it my great aim in life to know what you have for me to do for you. I want to give you my heart. I want to give you my life. I want to say, I am the clay. I don't want to try to be the potter and the clay. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we try to do that like, no, Lord, I'm the clay and I'm the potter and that's the way it is. What, what, how would the clay look if we were the potter? <laughs> God's the great master designer of our lives. So we need to understand that he is the potter and we're the clay. I love what God told Abraham. He said, come, come with me and I'm going to make you. And that's exactly what God is uh, saying to all of us or what he's doing with all of us. He say, come with me and I'm going to make you. And how many of you know that that's our cry has to be back to God. Lord, I give you my life. Lord, I give you my heart. I surrender my plan to your plan. I surrender my purposes to your purposes. For your purposes are higher than my purposes. And I'm going to trust you. I'm going to let you mold me, shape me. And it may be painful at times. I may feel stretched at times. But I want to become everything that you've called me to be. I want to spend my whole life serving you and being a vessel of honor for you in your hands. Amen. Look at this. It's powerful. 
This is actually a quote from Pastor Jason. It says, nobody knows us like him, so we must go to him for purpose. Nobody knows you like God knows you. You may think you know your spouse like nobody else, and you probably do. But at the same time, God knows them on a whole nother level. God knows them on a whole nother level. You may think you really, really know your kids, and you do to an extent. But God knows the treasures and the secrets and the plans and the purposes that he has for all of our children. So God knows you best. So it's important that we go to him for our purpose. And in Psalms 119 verse 35, it says, Make me walk along the path of your commands, for that is where my happiness is found. I don't know about you, but I tried all this, and I tried that, and I tried looking for uh, happiness here and happiness there. But only happiness is found in your relationship with God. You will only find true happiness when you have a relationship with your creator, your God, your father, your savior, your Lord. And when you get on the path, and today we're going to be talking about the path a lot. But when you get on the path, what does the path do? It helps reveal to you who God is to you. It helps reveal the bigness of God, the strength of God, so you can live on another level with God. And that is where happiness is found. I'm going to talk to you about a couple things of when I learned as I began to grow spiritually with the Lord. On how there was times when I didn't even know that Jesus healed people. I didn't even know that you could pray and things would change. And I was a believer, but I didn't know those things. And that's why number two is so important. And it is the path is what God has given us to raise a mighty army. That's what God has given us. That is what God has given all of you here this morning. The path is not just something that's here. The path is something that God has given you as a gift that you can take advantage of and be a part of and you can begin to grow in the things of God and your life can go from one level to another level. Come on, somebody say amen. Look at this. I love this scripture. I think this is going to be one of my most favorite scriptures in the world now, I think, I believe. In Acts 17, 6 through 7, the Bible says, these who have turned the world upside down have come here too. I don't know about you, but that's me. That's you. We are of those who turn the world upside down. Come on, I don't know if you heard me. I don't know if they got to turn me up a little bit or something. But we are of those who turn the world upside down. We don't settle for average. We don't settle for normal. We don't just sit down and settle with where we are in life today. We are progressive. We are moving forward. We are trusting God. We are thinking bigger. We are thinking broader because our God is bigger and stronger than maybe where we are today. So we are of those that turn the world upside down. And it says here, Jason has harbored them. <laughs> I like that. I don't know about you. I like that because our pastor is Pastor Jason. And I love the scripture because it says that Jason, basically, he kept them in his house. He kept those who turned the world upside down and he harbored them or he hid them or he kept them in his house. And I love that because that's Pastor Jason's name. And how funny, the same kind of spirit, right? God is just awesome. I just, I just love looking at him and thinking, wow, God, you're just awesome at what you do, right? Okay, and it says, and these are all acting contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying there is another king and his name is Jesus. I love this about them because they went against all normal. They didn't just go with society and go with everything that Caesar decreed, but they literally went against it and they said, no, 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 there's another king and his name is Jesus. And I feel like we're cut from the same cloth that we are called to declare that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is King. We're called to bring God's freedom to this generation and we are of the house of Jason and we are of the house that turns the world upside down. <laughs> I don't want to be normal. I don't want to be average. 
Sometimes my flesh wants to be normal. Sometimes my flesh wants to be comfortable. But there's something on the inside of us. There's something on the inside of me, something on the inside of you that says there's got to be more. I've got to keep breaking through. I've got to break through for the future generation. I've got to break through for my children. I've got to break through for my grandchildren. I've got to break through. There's got to be more people that need freedom. There's got to be more nations that need freedom. I don't know about you, but there's got to be something on the inside inside of you that knows that there's more and there's a radical something about you you may be here for the first time but you're not here by accident that's the kind of house that we have here in every christian there is a mighty warrior ready to be developed in every single person that comes to the altar that gives their life to the lord there is a mighty warrior on the inside of them. There's a treasure hidden amongst darkness. Every single person is valuable to God. Every single person is precious to God. And every single per person, God has a plan and purpose for their life. In 1 John 3.14, the Bible says, I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Babies need milk to grow. Children need bread to live on. Young men need meat to make strong, and the mature need strong meat to train their senses to discern good and evil. So just like we began to grow up in the physical, we started off as infants, and then we grew to toddlers in elementary age and junior high and high school. All those, those, those developmental stages in the natural, God also does in the spirit as well. We are to grow up spiritually in God. And that's why the path is such a precious gift, because it facilitates all of us to grow spiritually. Can I have my praise and worship men, um, guests, <laughs> examples? Come on, let's put our hands together for these guys, these wonderful men of God. Wow. You so you have the baby stage, you have the child stage, you have the young man, and you have the father stage. <laughs> oh, Daddy, Daddy David, Mr. David. <laughs> All right, and how old are you? 19. You're 19. So he's 19. But if he just gave his life to the Lord and he just got born again, he's a baby in his spirit. So he's like goo goo ga ga in the spirit, right? He may be driving a car, you know, wear cool clothes and be super awesome uh, in, in the natural. And you've grown and learned so many things growing up from your all these different things. But now he's got to learn how to be with God. So this is the baby stage. So at the baby stage, he goes to the altar or he gets saved in a family group. And then he goes to the salvation room and he says, you know what? I need to sign up for freedom family class. I need to get water baptized. I received my fresh start. I received my forgiveness. But I really don't know if I'm coming or going. <laughs> I Like me, like me, for example. When I first got saved, I didn't know right versus wrong. I thought everything was gray. Like if I thought it was okay, I guess it's okay. But I needed to find someone right away to teach me from the Bible, not necessarily their opinion, but I needed what does the word of God say is right? What is wrong? I don't know. Can you please teach me? That's why it's so important that he goes to freedom family class. That's the first step for the baby. And then next here, then he becomes a child and he begins to grow. But he's still learning. He's, he's still being watched over. Sometimes he puts things in his mouth he's not supposed to still. You know, you're like, don't eat that. It's on the floor. It's been there for a couple of days. Ah, you're, right? you're not supposed to do that. So he's learning. He's growing. And now because he started off here, he, he went to Lifestyle of Freedom. 
Now he's going to Lifestyle of Freedom. He's learning about prayer. He's learning about having a relationship with God. Now he, and he's forgiving people that have hurt him in the past. And he's having encounters with God. And he's, he's talking to God. And he has a coach. And, and his coach is calling him during the week and, and challenging him and loving him and counseling him at times and just being there for him. And he begins to grow from a baby to a child. And then he grows into a young man. And here's Michael here, our young man. And he grows into a young man. And he's still learning. He's still growing. And he's in lifestyle of freedom. And the key is he didn't quit lifestyle of freedom. He didn't jump out of lifestyle of freedom. He didn't only go to level one. He went to level one. He went to level two. And now he's going over to Freedom Bible College. He's going to trimester one. Oh, man, he's feeling a little nervous because he's doing something he's never done before. He's positioning himself to be a little uncomfortable, but he's growing. He's growing. He's learning more, and he's learning more, and he's learning more. And he, the key is he's just not quitting. He's not giving up on the process. He's staying on God's path, and he's continuing to grow. Maybe you see yourself here today. I'm telling you, you could have gotten saved 15 years ago and you're still in the baby or child stage just because maybe you didn't know what to do or where to go and who to meet and who to talk to because God grows all of us together. We never grow just by ourselves. We grow with our relationship with God, but we also grow by the people that are in our lives. Come on, somebody say amen. I want to help you today. That's my heart. My heart today is just to help you. So I want you to understand that. And then you go from a young man, and then you go to being an, a father in the faith. Where David, his whole thing is, man, I'm so thankful that God saved me. I'm so thankful that he water baptized me. I'm so thankful I know how to pray now. I'm so thankful I realize I have authority in Jesus' name. Wow, oh my gosh, I, I, I'm so thankful I know that I can pray for somebody and they can get better. Oh, I want to open up my house. I want to have a family group. I want people to come. I want them to feel loved. I want to raise up others. I want to take people from the baby stage all through out the, all the stages that God took me on. And in every single baby, there's a father. In every single baby, there is a father. In every single person who comes, there is a leader on the inside of them. In every single one of them, there's a warrior on the inside of them. So I encourage you, don't settle for where you are today, but stay on God's path. And can you continue to go from one level to another, from another level to another level. And let the word of God teach you every single step. Of are you positioning yourself to grow in the Lord? I'm encouraging you that God loves you and he has a plan for your life. So don't resist it. Let God do that work in your life. Number three, I'm just going to go to number three. It's my favorite point. That other scripture is my favorite scripture. Now this is my favorite point. <laughs> All right. Number three. I was going to name it sink or swim. I'm jumping in. But I changed my mind. Because I said, no, we're not going to sink. No sinking. No sinking. <laughs> So I, then I thought, oh, well, I'll do swim. I'm jumping in. And I said, no, that's not cool. That's not, that's not, that doesn't sound good. So I just said, let's keep it simple. I'm jumping all in. <laughs> all of us, all of us have to respond to the call of God on our lives. Where he calls us, he says, hey, I love you. Hey, I have a plan for your life. Hey, I want to do something with you. I want to mold you, shape you. I want to help you go from where you are to where I see you can be. I want to use you to help other people's lives. I want you to bring God's freedom to this generation. But we all have to respond to the Father. And our response this morning needs to be, I'm jumping all in. I'm going to read this verse, and we're closing with this in just a moment. But in Ezekiel 47, it says, And when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters came up to my ankles. Somebody say ankles. 
Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters, and the water came up to my knees. Somebody say knees. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the water, and it came up to my waist. Somebody say waist. Again, he measured 1,000, and it was a river that I could not cross, for the water was too deep, water in which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. This is where we are this morning. You're standing in front of the ocean, and you're on a boat, or you're on a cliff, and there's this vast ocean. How many of you here don't like swimming in the ocean very much? Like, oh, don't like scuba, snorkel, snuba, snuba, snorkel, whatever you want to name it. I don't really like it, right? Why? Because it's so big. It's so deep. There's wild animals in the ocean. There's whales. There's sharks. There's eels. There's tiny little fish. There's, I look out in the ocean, and I can't see when it ends. So I'd rather not swim in the ocean. <laughs> we feel comfortable in the pool because I can see I can see the floor of the pool. I can know how high I'm comfortable with going. But how many of you know that that's what God is telling us today? I want you to jump all in. I want you to jump into the ocean, into the deep. I want you to lose control. I want you to swim. I want you to trust in me. I want you to just give me your heart. Just give me your life and let me do something with it. But we're like, no, I'm satisfied with ankle. I'm satisfied with just coming on Sunday. I'm satisfied with just going to a family group. And then we, we try the knee, and we're like, oh, no, too much water, too much water. And we get to the waist, and you know that feeling when you get in the water, you're like, ah, it's freezing, it's freezing. And you want to get out, you want to jump out. And then when we're asking you today, jump into the ocean, jump out, jump all in with all your life, with all your hopes, with all your dreams, and get on the path of God and let God do a great work and let him mold you and shape you and take you from being a baby to being a child, to being a young man, to being a mother or a father in the faith where you go ahead and spend your life. Raising up people to worship God. Raising up people to love the Lord. Raising up people. The same freedom you received, you freely give. Don't play it safe by staying in the kiddie pool, right? Don't play it safe by sitting on the sidelines. You got to jump in. You got to jump in. Lifestyle of freedom is right around the corner. Freedom family groups are available all the time. And that's why it's easy for us to be comfortable and isolate. But when you're comfortable and you isolate, you don't grow. You don't grow. You don't change. And years can go by and you be the same. The same issues, the same problems, the same uh, things that just hold you up, the same insecurities. But it's not until you step out and you give your life to the Lord. It's not until you respond to the call of God. It's not until you just let go into the ocean, into the river of God. I don't know about you, but I want to be one of those who walk on the water with Jesus. I don't want to just watch other people walk on the water. I want to at least try. I want to step out. I want to, like Peter, he walked on the water with Jesus. God loves you. He has a plan for your life. You're not here by accident. And don't get frustrated with where you are today. Just position yourself so God can mold you and shape you and get on the path so you can grow. Everybody stand to your feet this morning. I want you to take a few minutes, and I really want you to let this word just really sink into your heart this morning. Locate yourself this morning. Where are you? Where are you positioning yourself? to go. Are you positioning yourself to grow with every eye closed and just worshiping the Lord? Let's let God minister to us today. Let's let him speak to us today. Come on. Come on. Let's worship him. Have your way in this place. Speak to you today. We make room. We make room. We make room. 
Don't forget to follow us on all your social media platforms. Subscribe to us on YouTube and take freedom on the go by downloading the SoundCloud app today. Once again, thank you for tuning in.